So we're back, Gary, Chuck. I want to talk about a timeline of the universe. I've heard you talk about this, Neil, and you've sort of referenced it in the gridiron timeline of the universe. Oh, I could do that, yeah. All right, but then... I'll yeah, work my that's... way up to that because there's a lot of ways I can get there. But All totally, right. that's where the timeline, I think, in fact, works best in the gridiron of the universe. But we are mapping right now with the James Webb Telescope. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it'll be fun to see. I'll, yeah. well, I'll get to that. I have to okay. do a quick calculation before that. But to find out what part of the timeline of the universe is the James Webb Telescope serving. Well, that's cool. Our curiosities. So let's can start we, off. Can we, take, can we bet on where, uh, we where can. the kickoff lands? Oh! <laughs> we can bet on anything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Somebody who's got the Caesars playbook or whatever that, that yeah, thing is. Yeah, FanDuel. It's FanDuel. FanDuel. It'll, it'll Somebody's got it. Mm -hmm. So here's how it goes. You take the, the age of the universe, mm -hmm. which is about 14, round it to 14 billion years. Okay? And you can ask, how do you think about that? How do you... Yeah. How do you measure that? How do yeah. you... And so... It's incumbent honestly, upon you can't you can't even think. That's what I'm saying. Nobody it's can, not, nobody can get their mind around 14 million. Much less 14 billion. Let less exactly, 14 yeah. billion. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, or, or 14,000 even, right? Yeah, well, in even, years, we could never really think about what 14,000 years are. Right, right. It's, it's outside of, uh, it, that's called deep time, and no one even thought anything in the universe was as old as that until relatively recently. Right. right? In the last 150 years or so. Yeah. So think of all of the history of civilization and what our understanding was about time. Part of the problem is we think time intervals are, you know, somehow cosmic time intervals somehow matter to human time intervals. Right. And they don't <laughs> at mm. all. So the universe is, don't care. The universe don't care. We have other indications of time scales that are different. For example, that of a dog, all right? Right, right. Yeah, You come home, the dog is jumping, licking you in the face, right. happy to see you. And all it, you did was forget your keys. <laughs> <laughs> you were just there. Oh, you just went out and got the mail. And a came, half back, ago. came back from the mailbox. Right? <laughs> so the dog is so fully living life. Think about that. Wow. You know, humans don't carry on. Dogs do. Yeah. Yet every day a dog lives is like seven days to a human. Wow. Now okay. I have another reason to be jealous of dogs. Now, you, you can say that both ways. You can say <laughs> one day unto a human is seven days unto the dog, right? Because we live seven times as long as a dog. But I'd rather think of it the other way, that the dog lives seven days of life in one of your days. Wow. And that's why it'll sleep when you're not there, but when you're there, it is all up in your face, begging for your food, even though it just ate, looking all cute, uh, get, wanting to get pet, get his stump, tummy rub. Mm -hmm. So these are two very different time scales, yeah. and the life forms are reflecting that, I think. That makes sense, because you go, you take them out for a walk in the morning, and then when you come home from work, they're just like, you know, let's go, let's go. Let's do it, and, yeah, know, come on, come on, you ready? Great. Let's yeah, go, yeah. man. It's been three days. Since you walked me. <laughs> what is your problem? How could you leave me here for three days, man? Because well, that's half of one day. Right, right. That's Almost right. The, the morning to the evening. Chuck did the math on that one. Wait, did you see, it was a Saturday Night Live skit of when, when it came out that Wilt Chamberlain had like thousands of lovers, yeah. okay, in his biography, and no one believed it, but it's like, but you're not Wilt Chamberlain, right? So who, who are you to say it wasn't? Mm -hmm. So Saturday Night Live did a skit and it was called The Love Diaries of Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so he's in a hotel room, and a woman shows up, and it's like, our eyes met, and it was love at first sight. Where has she been my whole life? Uh, I don't know. Our moments were so tender and so soft. And then, and then it says, six minutes later, we began to grow apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Every five minute encounter had a full a romantic full relationship. Uh, yeah. Relationship. That's pretty cool. Of, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, so time scales, you want to try to get a sense of them. And usually you have to do that by putting them into another kind of reference frame. 
So one way to do it is if you take 100 meters, let's say, right? right? It's a little longer than 100 yards. It won't make much of a difference for what I'm about to describe. So take 100 meters. That's more international to think of it that way. And we can ask if the timeline of the universe were placed onto those 100 meters, where would things happen on that field? Okay. And I guess, you know, the gridiron football, they mark out the 100, the 100 yards. Yeah. So let's, let's go back to yards here. Okay. Mm -hmm. 100 yards. Let's map 14 billion years into 100 yards. Okay. Big Bang is right at the beginning at one end zone. Okay. Right? And let's keep walking down. You have to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Now it's, going, it's counting down to like 40 to 30. You got to go to the opponent's 30-yard line before the solar system is born. Wow. The universe has spent nearly two-thirds of its life without the solar system. Ooh. To this day, there are religious people or people motivated by religious philosophies who say that the conditions in the universe are just right for life, just right for human life. Because had any of these parameters been different, then we wouldn't be here. So it's perfectly tuned. And I'm saying if two-thirds of the history of the universe, there was no solar system, what does it mean to say that it was perfect for life? That sounds really inefficient. Seems to me it's perfect life, you'd have life going right away. But no, you have to slowly make the heavy elements from the light elements. All that happened in the first three minutes, okay? Well, you made, made uh, hydrogen, and then you start making stars after the dark ages. The, the James Webb Space Telescope is exquisitely tuned to look just at the end of the dark ages in the early universe where we had matter and energy, but no stars yet. They mm. had to be made and then assemble into galaxies and have enough of these to make enough heavy elements to make planets. Because planets have a lot of heavy elements in them and they're made in the centers of stars. That takes time. We are second, third generation star system that made the sun. And we see stars being born today, looking deep inside gas clouds. When those stars have planets in orbit around them, all of them made of the heavy elements that occurred later. And so you got to get to your adorable. opponent's 30-yard line before you even see the solar system. Now you keep trudging along. You'd say, yeah. well, when, when are we, you know, when did life kick in? I, life kicked in pretty quickly after Earth cooled down, okay? Take a few steps. You have evidence, earliest evidence of life on Earth, microbial life. How about okay. life that looked interesting? How about anything such as that? Okay, well, you got to get down eight, uh, down to the four-yard line. The four-yard line, single-celled organisms become multi-celled organisms. And the multi-celled organisms can do things like they have legs and antennae and, and eyeballs or, or early, early versions of eyeballs, sensory sensors of what is happening in their environment. That's at the four-yard line. The four-yard line. Keep walking. You keep going. You keep going. Now, what? Okay. Well, when do we get to human civilization? How about just civilization? Now, how about, no, forget civilization. How about just troglodytes, tro right. cave dwellers? How about, where are they? Cave dwellers appeared at the near side of the thickness of a blade of grass at the zero yard line. So right before the next end zone, yeah. you are one thickness of the blade of grass towards the end zone to find cave dwellers. Correct. You're in the goal line. Correct. And now you move your way through the thickness of that blade of grass mm. and find, yeah. okay, the development of agriculture. That's like, that's two thirds of the way, two thirds of the way through the thickness of the blade, agriculture. Then you keep going, okay? And then you get, like, Moses. Go half again through the, what remained of that. You get Moses, and then Jesus, and then Muhammad, and all of this in the last one-third, 
to one tenth in that range of the blade of grass that is at the end at zone the goal line. after you travel yeah. the hundred yards to get there. It's fourth and a tenth of a blade in grass. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, See we're not mom's... sure. <laughs> Is he going to go uh, for it? <laughs> apparently, the coach doesn't have a lot of uh, confidence in us. <laughs> uh, they're going to kick. <laughs> it looks like they're going to kick a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> they only made it to troglodytes. They can't <laughs> better. So, what's what's the theory, Neil? When things move like that, that all of a sudden just completely accelerate at a ridiculous speed, comparative to what we've experienced through that time. Well, so what happens is what civilization did and the discovery of science as a tool to mm. shape civilization, we can have rapid progress, or if you don't want to value judge the inventions of science, we can say we have rapid change. Yeah. You know, you know, 110 years ago, horses was the, was the way to go. Mm -hmm. And a hundred and, and a hundred years ago, you couldn't give away a horse. That was a very fast change, yeah. in, especially in cities. Or agriculture take a while before they had good tractors. But the point is, yeah, you can have change, but that doesn't that doesn't get because it happens quickly. Yeah, it's sort of hidden in this timeline. You have to like zoom in and expand it, zoom in, expand it, zoom in and expand it, and only then do you get to see what's going on in our lives. In all my fairness to the change uh, with horses, it was motivated by poop. No, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that will. <laughs> That will speed things up. Horse manure. Okay. Horse manure will speed some things up. Right, because there were no pooper scooper laws. That's right. <laughs> yes. If, you're, if your horse dropped some dump, that, you didn't get it. off and clean that stuff up. You. That's it. They didn't have, have Central Park diapers. They didn't have those. <laughs> they didn't do that. You just stepped in some steaming horse poop. Yeah, you go. You came behind. <laughs> so you'd have to zoom in yep. on this timeline to see where we are in our modern civilization, which has been so significantly touched by the progress of science. So, so I, I get that. The point of this exercise, however, is to see what we are relative to the universe. Mm. And for those who say, oh, the universe was created just for us, and all these stars are just for me, and the people, or, or Mercury's in retrograde, and Mercury is affecting my life really mm -hmm. really look at this universe look at how big it is look at how old it is look at how many stars are in it really and so this transformation of a timeline into a distance line i think is one way to familiar to to gain perspective on this and of course we did something similar to that in cosmos first done in the original cosmos with uh, Andrewian co-writer with, with Steve Soder and, of course, Carl Sagan, they have what's called the cosmic calendar. What they did was there was they took time and they put it into time, right? They took the history of the universe and laid it from January 1st to December 31st. Okay. And so that's a little different. We did time into a distance. They did time into a time. Why did they do that? Because we have words for those time units. We have things called months. We have a year, we have months, we have weeks, we have days, we have hours, we have minutes, we have seconds. So because we have ready-made vocabulary to describe much smaller units of time than a year, it became very helpful to represent it in that fashion. So it's a matter of when was civilization, just like a minute ago, or two, I have to recalculate that to get the numbers right. But we have words for this. And when was, civil, when was you know, the automobile invented? Like a fraction of a second into the past. And you yeah. say, damn, we ain't been here any amount of time at all. all right. So does things like the James Webb Telescope, will that make us think about the calibration of time and the universe in a different way? Or just it literally enlighten us that's, that's as to what happened? Excellent question. So all it will, quote, simply do is take us to a place in time forgive me for using a place and a time reference in one sentence, take us to a place in time yeah. where galaxies are being born. So we get to fill in the storyline. So you go back to the previous end zone. So the James Webb Space Telescope, if I just did a fast calculation in real time, uh, will go back to the 
seven yard line. Oh wow! Now, seven yard. The line. real question is who's returning this kickoff <laughs> because <laughs> that will make a big difference in how long that <laughs> that, will take. that timeline really is. Yeah. Right. yeah, but think about it. I mean, it's a lot of universe between one end zone and the other. Yeah, but right. what that means is we will have access to almost the entire playing field, almost the entire timeline of the universe. Right. From seven yards up to 100 yards. This is an extraordinary triumph of modern astrophysics enabled, empowered by brilliant engineers that enabled us to to work with this telescope to begin with. All so that science can tell you, you ain't so special. <laughs> science is really good at that. Yep. To That's tell you right. Now, what we really want to know is be able to look in the other direction and predict the future, which uh -huh. we do with some, I can tell you about solar eclipses in 10, 100, 1,000 years from now, at what exact minute the sun will disappear as viewed from any point on Earth's surface. I can do that, all right? Some other predictions are a little fuzzier, but still have real foundations to them, like humans are warming the Earth, all right? And that can melt the polar ice caps and flood our coastal cities, all right? Oh, you want to know what minute that will happen? The, me the calculations are, are harder than it is for an eclipse to give you the exact minute that's going to happen. But I can speak statistically of the likelihood that storms are going to wash over your beachfront property. So there uh, you have it. Gridiron timeline. And and it just it's a, some fast cut. You just take ratios. Uh, it's a, it's a it's an exercise in ratio taking. Yeah. It's so uh, simple, Gary. It's so simple. So all I did just so I can tell you. So <laughs> so look, James Webb Space Telescope is observing galaxies maybe back to a billion years after the Big Bang. So you take the ratio of 1 billion to 14 billion. Mm -hmm. All right? And what is that fraction? And then you multiply that fraction by 100 yards. And that'll tell you how, um, how many yards you'll uh, back at seas. Mm -hmm. I get about seven yards. And you know yeah. why uh, we don't have to do that? Because you did it for us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like calculating? It's fun with calculations. Oh, it's, it's... We, we probably don't have as much joy doing it as you do. So anyhow, uh, that's it for this installment of Explainers. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, keep looking up.